subscribe and ring the bell to never miss an update. Hello everyone, today on Lady Mary Bath, we are at the Franklin Antique Mall in Franklin, Tennessee. I can't wait to show you around this fabulous store. I have not been here in years. I do remember seeing some great items the last time. So come on in and let's take a look and see what they've got today. It's always a nice warm welcome at the Franklin Antique Mall. Lots of decorative elements as well. Let's step into this first room and it looks like Christmas. This is one of the most beloved patterns, Spode Christmas. Perfect for the holidays. And this silver plated samovar reminds me of Downton Abbey. Do you remember when the Dowager Countess poured tea from this as she received a guest? Yes, love that. It's a great price too. And I should have looked at those Linux napkins. I didn't notice those. My neighbor has this pattern and I have some pieces for her that I'm gifting and I found them at Bluebird Circle for a deal. This is silver overlay. It looks like it's gold, but it's actually a sterling over glass and you do have to polish it. It's quite easy and the price is right. It's a really good deal. I'm all about cake stands and especially when it's an antique or vintage etched piece. This is the prelude pattern. $30 is an excellent price. I have the same piece and they're great for stacking. If you don't want to store a three tiered server, you can simply stack some of your cake stands. Lots of treasures here on this table. Let's take a closer look. I am eyeing the cobalt glasses. It's a nice pop of color. These are not fine etched crystal pieces, but you know, it really doesn't have to be. I think the color adds such interest. And this oversized sugar shaker is purposeful. You can use that for cinnamon and sugar, even baby powder in the nursery. It's a great item. You don't see too much anymore. I like the black base on these etched ice beverages. It's something you don't find so often. And look how it is on a silver tray. As you walk in, this is the first booth on your left, and wow, they have some amazing deals I wanted to point out. This is a vintage sandwich server that has a beautiful etched pattern. It is the Fastoria Romance design, and you've probably seen how I featured items that you can use for many different purposes. I'll link that video. So many great things. And this is a Fastoria Navarre divided dish for $14. What a deal. And I know many of you are always looking for hostess gifts, birthday gifts, fill that with some candy, wrap it up you will be definitely invited again. Such a great gift. And from World Worcester, we have these for $5 each with a great back stamp. Wouldn't that be a nice gift for someone? You could put a chocolate truffle in the middle, wrap it up in cello with a ribbon, and there you have a lovely gift. That's a lovely basket. That is actually crystal. It's Eastern European perhaps, or maybe made in Germany for $12. What a deal. And salt cellars, you know, these are practical for dipping sauces and so many other purposes. You could even put a ring in that. I have a large collection. I need to bring them out and use them more often. That's a nice chafing dish there. And the Iris herringbone pattern from the Jeanette Glass Company. You probably saw me get this for, I think, $8 at a community garage sale with my friend Meredith. But the matching glasses are very hard to find. And I would say this is definitely a good deal. And that would make a great gift for someone. Can you just see lemonade or iced tea on the front porch and that? My mother had this silver plated piece and she would put a cheese ball in the center with crackers and fruit. You could even remove that center silver plated bowl and put a larger crystal one. These Linux elephants would be so lovely on a table, one on each end of a centerpiece. Here they have some silver plated and sterling items. I like those sugar tongs. And Madame Alexander dolls are highly collectible and for $20 a piece, that is a steal. My grandmother had a table much like this, the oval with the marble top. That's from the Victorian era. It's got a touch of East like to it. And 
the botanic garden from Port Merion, I always see that laurel leaf pattern, but I wasn't familiar with this look. It looks like something for Easter. It's called Terrace, and I'm not seeing it before. There's so many neat items here as well. They call this a neti pot, and if you have seen my episode on Heights Antique Mall, you'll know that these are invalid feeders. So many of my viewers have let me know that. I thought it was an infant feeder, so that actually clears it up. I think that's really a neat thing. You could use it for chicken soup if someone is unable to help themselves. And Waterford Crystal, who knew that they had such a fabulous china pattern? I'm not familiar with this. It's the Bassano. Hmm. And they have the salad dessert plates. Never heard of it. It has a raised pattern here. It's absolutely exquisite. It looks like a wedding cake. And I think it's fabulous. What a find. And Waterford Crystal also makes linens. I remember in the 90s when our company branched out to make china writing instruments, linens, and Christmas ornaments, and the glass kind that are colored like the Radco. And this is one of the examples of Waterford Linens. It's a bread cover that has the four corners that you fold in, and it's $12. Isn't that great? Another wonderful gift for someone on your list. And of course, they've got the Millennium Flutes in the box. So many neat things here. It's a great opportunity to start a teacup collection. You know, I've shared mine with you in a previous episode. These look to be the same pattern. Oh, my mother had some of these toll trays and she would hang them on the wall too. And of course you can use them for serving. This is the Linux Charleston pattern. I'm not familiar with that. And for $10 for one cup and saucer, a great start to a collection. Love that Ruby cut to clear vase. And I'm all about etched glass. This would be elegant glass of the depression era. And this happens to be the number one pattern of that time, Rose Point from Cambridge. It is beautiful. I tend to have more of the Navarre pattern because it just seems to be a little bit more affordable. It's the same product, it's just a slightly different design. Look at that wine goblet. Isn't that incredible? You probably will find this on your thrifting hunts as well. This ruby glasses are perfect for so many holidays. It goes with July 4th, Christmas, fall even, and great for the summertime. Add a bit of blue to that. And lots of little nooks here and different wall hangings and shelves. I'm getting some ideas and I especially like the price point of that bowl for $5. This three part table I had not seen before and it is mahogany. I actually saw the same table painted gold at Leaper's Fork Spa a few days later. So must be a Tennessee thing. I have not seen that before. And this is a pitcher, or actually they call it pitcher. It's a teapot from Hall. That's a company that you occasionally will see. And here's some other really interesting teapots. I see some that would be great for holidays, for every day. That gold stripe would be perfect for Christmas. And the hawk wines that are hand cut and dipped, that's called cased crystal, are fun. I think that would be great on a New Year's table if you're looking for a formal look with maybe a neutral white or cream and gold dinnerware pattern that would really pop. This is a typical Eastern European with the Hobstar design and that happens to be a biscuit barrel. You could do so much with that. Be a nice centerpiece or an entry table. And this is an excellent price, $26 for the covered casserole and it comes with a Pyrex insert and a lovely finial too. The optic opalescent glass is so fun. You could put spoons in that for dessert. Lots of different purposes. And there's just so much to see here. There are lots of different rooms. In fact, I got turned around a few times, but I always find Waterford Crystal. This is the Lismore Nouveau pattern. It's kind of a modern twist on that number one traditional pattern from Waterford Crystal. $80 for the pair is excellent. And you can add this one for another 35 and have a trio of candle holders. And of course, with the Waterford sticker on them too. I like these horse bookends. I think, of course, they could go into study, but I'm seeing them on a dining table with maybe a large bowl in the center, an oval shape, and these could be standing guard on each end. And that's a crystal scarab paperweight. I've not seen one of those before with a sticker. How about that? 
This pair of vintage glass and brass candle holders I think would be perfect on your dining table for any occasion. But for Christmas, I can see maybe a candle wreath up at the top. You can make it festive. Really for $59 a pair, I think is an amazing deal. Think of the possibilities. And I spy some chinoiserie. Look at the oval soup terrain complete with underplate and ladle. And I'm thinking you could have two for the price of one with this. Take off the lid and put in a couple of poinsettias and that there you have a Christmas centerpiece ready to go. I just love the Fenton hobnail, especially when it's opalescent. They have some beautiful glass pieces. This is from the 1920s, which means it's an antique now. It's French and it's opalescent. Love that pressed glass bowl. They have so many treasures. And when you're shopping an antique store, Think of the possibilities for gifting. If you have a budget, even if you're doing a gift exchange and you can't spend more than, let's say, $15 or $20, there's so many items you can find here. And if you wanted to add something interesting to it, you could do that as well as part of your gift packaging. My mother had this Desert Rose Franciscan pattern. I've not seen those mugs before. Let's go down the aisle here and see what else we can discover. There's so many great finds in this booth and unique items. And of course, my eye is drawn to Waterford Crystal. This is the Peacock Centerpiece Bowl that was part of the Designer's Gallery collection in the 90s. And I just love it. I think it was $7.50 retail and their price is $4.99. And I think they're having a sale in this booth today. Lots of great items. So let me set this back and then I will show you some more items. They have a pair of Depression Era blue glass lamps. Don't you love the aqua color? It's got such a unique shape to it. And there are a pair of lamps, so that makes it really nice. And behind me is a neat piece of furniture with a marble top. This was a gentleman's cabinet. And surprisingly, it has drawers. You would assume that maybe it has shelves in it. But we've got four drawers. That is so handy. Of course, I'm thinking that would be great for napkins or that sort of thing. Uh, could go in any room of the house, even an entryway. And they also have two Remington sculptures that are made of bronze. These are highly collectible and hard to find. This one's 1,250. It does help that they're having a sale on their furniture today, but I don't think the bronze statues are on sale. And here we have another one. So many great things in this booth. I remember hearing about Remington sculptures as a child and I just assumed that they were in museums. They certainly are very special and this booth has two examples of Remington. This lamp, I can just see on an entry table, look at that beautiful combination of the prisms, the brass, the glass, just love that piece. And of course, you know, I love the Waterford. I remember in the 90s when they launched the Peacock Bowl as part of the Master Cutter collection. And you're about to see a very special piece here in this cabinet. I'll tell you more about it. And it's such a thrill to be able to find this today. I have to show you this. It's the largest Saddler teapot I have ever seen. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at all that detailing. It's got a gold rim and gold accents on the finial. It's quite something and it's $299. Wow. I don't think I've held a teapot this large. Well, here's an update for you. I went back the next day and negotiated a really good price on this Sadler teapot and I shipped it home UPS and I have it in Houston. I will feature it in my celebration segment, first of the year. And I, thanks to you, have reached 10,000 subscribers and we will have a, some giveaways and celebration together. Look at this grandfather clock. It's walnut, has a nice federal design there with the eagle, and it's only $149. That's a steal. Waterford Marquis also had the 2000 Millennium Collection. I have some pieces from that. And when you're shopping for holiday gifts, remember to consider thrift stores, antique shops, really find some great things. And it is starting to become a trend in case you haven't heard in the news. Antiquing, thrifting is probably going to be about half of Christmas sales. And I think they have clued in to our wonderful way to shop. Look at that Limoges bowl for $30. And you don't even have to fly over to France to get it. 
would make a perfect gift. And here's some jadeite glass with promotional logo from Sunbeam Bread Company. I like that lemon reamer. And if you're wondering how to package items, you could certainly go to a shop and find some pretty Christmas boxes to put that in. I just love this Victorian etagere. It's made of mahogany. Isn't it incredible? I can just imagine the family that enjoyed this so many years ago, maybe my grandmother's family. I just think it's got such fine detail. You can't find a piece of furniture like that anywhere else today. And it's got lots of storage and display area and even has a drawer here. How fabulous is this? And the beautiful beveled glass here on the main mirror. I just love it. I think it's such a neat piece. This booth has some unique items. I wanted to show you some of the detail that I found inside this cabinet. It has sort of a velveteen fabric on each shelf, and I think it's original. It's in very good condition, and there's such detail here. And speaking of that, I wanted to show you this cake stand. I bought one of these at a shop in Houston, a Houston consignment store. This is $129.99, and I think it's a company that's still in existence, and I'll try to share that with you as we go along today. And this piece here is $5,995. And I think it is a showpiece. I so wish that I could take this home, but I certainly don't have a spot for it. And you could fill it with so many different finds from the shop today. There's a chocolate set. It looks like it's from Japan. And our friends at My Take on Home and Garden have featured their chocolate pot collections and uh, definitely worth a look if you haven't gone to their channel. I'll put a link in the description. My take on Home and Garden. They are just such fine folks and have great ideas for decor and collections as well. Here's a beer stein. It's called a Bierkrug in German. They don't say stein, actually means stone. And this looks like a Nippon dish. And these glasses would be great with just about any dinner setting. And that's the thing about antique shops is they often have complete collections because many of these vendors, dealers, will shop estate sales. There's a beautiful china pattern in this booth that I wanted to share with you. It's from Germany and I've never seen it before. Let me read you the information on it. It is Antique Heinrich and Company, which we have learned about. Villar and Bach later bought the Heinrich and Company. It's the Bird of Paradise. It's $899 for the set. I've never seen it before. This is quite special. And it even has the covered casserole. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at the finial. I'm surprised I've never come across this pattern before, but isn't it beautiful? And you can, of course, mix it with maybe white dishes or creamware. So many possibilities with this. Let me show you the teacup and saucer. It even has an oval platter, creamer and sugar. And here's the teacup and saucer. Isn't that gorgeous? It's so special. I know many of us find some patterns at a thrift store, or even an antique shop of something exquisite like this. And one way to stretch it, if you only find, let's say four dinner plates, four salad plates, if you have a seating for eight, so you could use a patterned dinner with a white salad plate, and then alternate that with a white dinner plate and a patterned salad plate. And that is a really good way to extend your pattern and to make it work for you. So don't ever walk past a deal that you find if it's just a few plates. This Wedgwood Florentine gold pattern is beautiful. And I love the laurel leaf glasses, perfect for iced tea. And these look like Dresden dolls. I had a friend growing up who collected these and I thought that was just so fabulous. This looks like it's from England, transferware, and it is from 1890. They do have some true antiques here. And I love the opalescent glass. And even if you have a friend that doesn't collect this, just gift them with one piece and they could use it on their tea table, on an entry table, or even for their dining. And that could add some interest and elevate their table. This is a Thomas Kincaid teapot. I've actually not seen one before. Maybe you have one in your collection. And Thomas Kincaid is all about light. And I like the gold handle on that. It works really well with that design. And here's some mid-century pieces. That is definitely very popular. This is a unique design element I featured on my table before. Not exactly mid-century, but it sure is fun. 
And here's some glassware that you would find probably on the set of Mad Men, the 1960s barware. That's an interesting look. I think ships must have been somehow uh, tied in with that because it's similar to a ship's decanter, which was in that shape so that it would not roll around if there was some uh, waves there as they were sailing. You may have seen the Waterford Lismore ship's decanter and that's how it gets its name. I like this cafeteria trays. I actually have a collection here and when we have small children over, it makes their meal just a little bit more interesting. They can put their snacks in each section and their drink and their cutlery and they actually are worth a lot these days. I have not seen a piece like this before. It is mid-century and it is from Shiting. Hmm, biomorphic dish. I wonder what that was used for. Perhaps you could even serve some side dish in that. And wheat was very popular. You probably have noticed that in some of the Linux China from that era. It was the cream and the gold with the wheat. It'd be great for banana splits. Yellow seemed to be a really prevalent color in the mid-century era. And there's so many different things. I like to get ideas from antique dealers and how they add unusual elements to create a story even something odd that they use for a different purpose. This looks like it was probably originally a clock, maybe a mantle clock, and maybe the clock stopped working and they put some fairy lights inside. I think that's really inventive. And look at that. You could even use champagne glasses for jewelry. Wouldn't that be a fun vase if you're bringing flowers to someone? Very sweet. And why not have a mink hat? I have one that matches my coat. It's definitely very 1940s and 50s, very stylish. I sure like that. There's a lot going on here, but I am drawn to the color gold. I think it just brightens up everything and definitely a different look here. But again, you could get some ideas. I like the gold tree. You can imagine that in my house and the mantle. And you know, you don't have to have a fireplace to have a mantle. You can put that on any wall in a room, even a bedroom. Oh, that's a great piece. I like this sign. That's a horrible idea. What time? I'm in. Well, this is a great way to elevate your everyday with all these fabulous crowns. And there are so many neat ideas. I like this angel candlestick. That would be great on a coffee table or entryway. And my eyes are going towards this beautiful figurine. It has a great back stamp. It's from Bavaria, it's $20. And I can see that in a glass cloche or just part of a design. I have a lot of gold in my house. And then here we have a lovely sugar and creamer set. Isn't that gorgeous? And it's Haviland Limoges from France. And here is the sugar bowl and lid. I think this is fabulous. You could add it with white dishes. You don't necessarily have to have the same pattern. And there are some melon sherbets that I wanted to point out too. Let's discover some more things in this booth. Oh, I do love a good cloche and look how they put the necklace on top. I featured a DIY segment on my channel and then also how to use your cloches for decor. I'm going to remember that. Drape a necklace over it. And look, here they have hung a chair up high. I guess it saves on space, but that could be an interesting item, maybe eye-catching something or other, maybe even put a holiday item on top. And I like this gold shelf. I can think of many uses in my home for that. And that picture is nice for $10. Can you imagine so many different uses? Put lemons in that, your best lemonade recipe, and give it to a friend for a housewarming gift. You just can't get any better than that. Love the angel wings. And here's some Hollywood movies that are immortalized in some modern teacups. Love the salt cellars. And that's a nice cabinet too. I like how they painted it gold. There's really so much to see. I'm sure you could come twice and see different things each time. That's why I went back the next day. When I film, I don't always see everything that I should. There's the Fostoria American pattern, the sherbet dishes, and this pair of vintage birds I really like. They look like soulmates. I could see that on an entry table or even as a 
maybe a focal point on your dining table. And you know, I like to set my dining table for um, every day. Even if I don't have dishes, I have a beautiful, interesting look to it so that when you enter my home, it has something of interest that's not a plain table with a just a boring floral display in the center with two candle holders. So that's something to think about too. You can design your dining room. And this teapot with creamer and sugar, I think is very fun. Looks like maybe 1940s or 50s. And it's from Burslem, England, $48. I think that could be a lot of fun to jazz up your tea table. And here's another sculpture that looks like a Remington. Deer are very prevalent in Tennessee. And you do find a lot of things like this at estate sales. And that's $99. It's had some repairs. Very fair. I like leopard print. And here they have just a touch of that in a booth. And you can see how it draws the eye in. These are from Haverty's. That's a high-end furniture shop. $190 I think is a really good deal. And you hear me talk about chinoiserie a lot. It's not always blue and white, even though that is what I usually feature. It can be of any color. And this pair of ceramic Foo Dogs, I really like. I can see that being a welcoming touch in your entryway. And see all the different colors here. I think that's just so exciting. And of course, you could add some of your blue and white to that as well. Or add pops of pink. That's a lovely European-inspired lamp. I like the turquoise color with the gold touches and the Greek key design. And there's so many different areas here. We have some 1950s kind of kitchen look. We've got mid-century, so many things. And the teapots, of course, I'm always drawn to. I think that's a saddler on the left. But let's look at this chest of drawers. I love blue and gold. Those are colors that speak to me. And that chest of drawers could go in any room of the house, including a study. You could store napkins in it. Even if you have a walk-in closet, you can put a chest of drawers inside and have extra storage. There's that Saddler teapot in the classic Blue Willow pattern. Just love it. And look at those chandeliers up high. It's a beautiful set of china. I really do think you should frequent your favorite antique shop often because it's always changing and you find things you didn't see before that may maybe were there the whole time. Here's a hand-painted chest of drawers. Look at that. $3.99. And that gives you some ideas of what you could do to something that maybe needs to be refinished. Simplify it and just paint it. And then it could coordinate with your colors. And it doesn't have to go in a bedroom. It would be a great entry piece as well. These flow blue plates are such fun. And you know, this was actually an accident that flow blue came about. And it was so well received that it became popular. These are $30 each and they are from Sweden. And look at these from Ridgeway, England, $28 each from 1816 to 1830. You could take one of each of these plates and hang them on the wall and create a story. Those are Limoges. Pa you see that? Hand painted. It's not just for the boxes, it's also for the china. There's some desert rose bowls. I like that pineapple mold. And think about a tray when you see an oval serving dish. You don't have to have the pattern to add interest. This is one of my favorite cookbooks. My new friend Theodore Leaf and I talk about this a lot. He has some great cookbooks. Pineapple Upside Down Cake on page 70 from the 1968 version is one of my standard recipes that I make probably at least once a month. And uh, Theodore Leaf is really fun. I don't know if you've ever um, watched him. He is a celebrity that's a guest on many shows and he interviewed me in a podcast last year or actually earlier this year. So um, let me know if you're interested in that. I could send you a link. For E.F. Hutton, that was a corporate gift. He was, a, I think, a stockbroker. It was a company that was well known. Here's a custom plate that Wedgwood made for Princeton University in 1930. The Blue Garland from Theodore Haviland is a very popular pattern. I think it's the number one still at Replacements Limited. I have an extensive collection of those, but I have it in storage and I don't really use it as often. I had a friend that wanted me to gift it to her, but then she had a change of heart with her circumstances. So I think I need to bring this pattern out and enjoy it again. My mother has gifted me with many pieces over the years. 
And this pair of breasts and glass hurricanes for $40, what a deal. You really have to go in knowing what you're looking for. For example, if you're trying to find three different Christmas gifts, birthday gifts, make a list. And as you go around the store, write some ideas down of what might be a good item. This for $40, a cash pot from Wedgwood Jasperware is a steal. And you know, I love blue and white, so I have to turn it over and look for the brand and they have good taste. They shop at one of my favorite stores from Goodwill. They forgot to remove the tag, but it's still a very good price. And the Florentine trays are fun. They're called Florentine because they're from Florence, Italy. And I bought some of these at the flea market in Germany and brought one home. I'll show you in my Christmas decor. And the pink tower from Spode is a very well-loved pattern. You've probably seen it before, even if you haven't heard of the pattern name. And the old Britain castles from Johnson Brothers and the pink willow. I have the Britain castles. I need to use that more often. And Scrabble is our favorite family game. We have such fun with that. And I've seen some art. In fact, I've even bought some at my local gift shop where they take some letters and mount them and create a beautiful item that you can hang on your wall. Such fun. It's a nice teacup. Great start to a collection. And some more chinoiserie elements. And some mid-century glasses. Here's some more of that blue garland from Haviland. There's just so much to see, but uh, definitely think about gifts when you're shopping, especially this time of year. This is a JFK and Mrs. Kennedy a collector's plate. I actually have John F. Kennedy's teacup and that was a thrifted find. There are only a few in existence and I will share that with you when I have my celebration video, hopefully. This is a bread cover. You may have seen this before and didn't quite know what it was. It has four corners and that keeps your rolls warm. You could use it for cookies. In fact, I've even put these in biscuit barrels and then added some cookies or something fun. And then I have a cover and it adds some interest. It's a nice art deco vase. They have so many eras represented and these plates are new. I really like the neutral look for the holidays. If you're not wanting to go with bright colors, I think that could be elegant with a gold rim. And it looks like farmhouse is definitely the look this year. I think a lot of people are going for the neutrals. And you know, people think antique shops are stuffy and have old things, but as you can see, oh, looks like there's actually nothing to see in there. Uh, there's something for everyone, every taste, style, and era represented here. Look at that milk glass punch bowl with 12 cups. And more importantly, it has the pedestal base. That's hard to find when you happen to stumble upon an awesome punch bowl. And, you know, white goes with everything. And especially with the silver rim and with neutral colors, with creams. So many possibilities, especially in January after Christmas when you want a clean slate. The false graph is something I happen to see a lot. This pattern I find at thrift stores, antique shops. The farmhouse look is very popular today. It's definitely on trend. And I want to share with you how some of these vintage and antique and fine pieces go well with that look. This is the country wear pattern from Wedgwood. It was originally made by Coleport, now has a Wedgwood label. It's a covered casserole. You can do so much with it, as we've recently talked about, of course, serving food to keep it warm, putting a floral display in it, using this as a vase, with or without the lid, and jewelry keeper, all kinds of things. But I do like how the white, no matter the era, it goes very well with this look. And down here, we have a milk glass vintage punch bowl with cups and that blends very well with it. And so many other white accessories, old and new, look great with it. I really do like how they give us ideas. See, there's a pop of color with the lemons and a black framed piece of art, and you really notice it against all of the white. It's a very classic look. Here they've got lots of gardening items. I love to peek in the booths. I always learn something. And you know, I like to repurpose items. Here's a creamer and why not put a plant in it? Even if it's an artificial one. I love pineapples as you know, and this indoor outdoor pillow is definitely going home with me. 
Love the look of that, it's fun. And I have blue upholstery on my outdoor furniture, so that's great. These bookends, I really like. Those could be door stops as well, or you could put them together and use as a centerpiece. Even put them inside of a bowl and something around it. You could really have fun with that. It's a classic look with the pressed glass and crystal. Oh, and you know I love the chinoiserie in all colors. And the blue and white is classic. This is an old marble topped wash stand. But what I really wanted to show you was the picture here. I have this as well. It's an offset picture, but look what they've done. They put faux snow inside, three simple trees, and look, you've got holiday decor. Oh, the blue and white fishbowl. I actually have one I'm using right now. It's not blue and white, but it is chinoiserie. And I have one of my Christmas trees inside of it that covers the base. My aunt has this blue Danube pattern. Really like the candlesticks. Ginger jars are classic, and I love the fact that this one has sort of a taupe color mixed in with the blue and white and adds some interest. It's a good price. I tell you, I don't like to shop retail for very much these days. I would much rather go to a thrift store, antique shop, charity resale, find interesting things for great prices. Look at this Arthur Court rooster pitcher. That is a rare item. It's not something I think I've seen in person before. And I always turn it over, even though this doesn't have a mark. It's a tea light candle holder. It doesn't matter. I don't need a mark. I just like to find out about the history because I find it interesting. Especially when you're giving a gift and you can share that history with them, maybe write it on a card. The Park Lane from Mikasa is made in Germany. That is a top bridal pattern. I don't know that it's still made, but it was for many years um, a very popular one. Botanic Garden from Port Marion. I'm always looking for that for my daughter. And the Park Lane Mikasa crystal pattern was based on the Messina from Baccarat. Of course, a huge price difference. I've never seen so many different Park Lane glasses in one spot. So it's a good opportunity to build a collection there. There's the old Britain castles. I need to bring my pattern out and use it more often. I featured Art of the Table where I showed you how to use this as the base pattern and mix with so many other ones. What a deal for $20. That looks like American Brilliant cut glass and more vintage EAPG cake stands. This is one of my finds for today. It's made by Ainsley. It's the cottage garden pattern and it's $8 for this heart trinket box. Wow, what a deal. And no, it's not Limoges. I turned it over. It does not say pain main. Oh, I had such fun finding beautiful things today at the Franklin Antique Mall. And I hope that you enjoyed all the pretties along with me. This is the original back stamp to Botanic Garden made in England. They make a lot in China these days, but you can still mix them and it's all lovely. Thanks for coming along with me today to the Franklin Antique Mall in Franklin, Tennessee. And you know I'm all about pineapples. I found this pillow that's indoor or outdoor for $19. What a deal. And I got three sets of the salt and pepper shakers for $4.99 each. Won't that be fun on a table? They're almost like individual salt and pepper. And this is for rolls or bread that you can place inside of a silver bowl or a basket. And I love vintage linens. For $7, that was a deal. The Fastoria Navarre divided dish will go well with my dessert plates in the same pattern, or it would make a great gift for someone. The Ainsley heart dish in the cottage garden pattern for $8 is a steal. This is such a find, and I do have some pieces already in this pattern. And getting a watering can that's enamel, isn't that fun? And then the other item that I couldn't show you right now is this silver chest with the Queen Anne legs. I can't wait to take that home. I'll have to leave it here and then bring it back next time I'm driving. Thanks again for joining Lady Mary Beth. Elevate your everyday with antique finds.